Finance Exhibit Number 14 contains several items that did not come apparently from Fulton County, and I'm standing next to Ms. Merchant to show them. But they're not in that group. Of, I don't know. The county attorney, I have no idea what this is. I got them from the county attorney. So it's going to come back and test But I can't agree that the documents that are not in the certified bundle yeah. are properly admitted as part of the exhibit. Okay. Uh, Ms. Merchant, would you like to repackage and present to Ms. Cross at Defense Exhibit 14? Um, I don't. They're exactly what I got from the county attorney. <coughs> Apparently, they didn't want to testify, so they gave us a certification but didn't put these in, so they're going to have to testify. I got them from them. Uh, the documents that the difference between the two document productions, what is what is the difference? They didn't even get these bank records, credit card statements, things like that that um, wouldn't ordinarily be part and course of the Fulton County records. But I got them from the open records portal. So that, I mean that's where I found them. No, I understand. Yeah. And and but the difference in production, Miss Merchant, you've Taking, you've taken a look at them and they're actually material to your case? Yes. In what way? They're all of his invoices, Judge. And then he has like a, it's just, this is what I got from them. It's all of his invoices. And one of the invoices is a reimbursement that he printed some things, but like for the reimbursement. I mean, I don't really care if they take the reimbursement out because they actually are already admitted in the other exhibit I did. I, I don't have any problem with the invoices. The invoices are clearly for the records and contained in the certification. So if we remove the items that, that there are, are in dispute, then I don't have an objection to the They're already in. And so you're removing them? Yeah, that's fine. You want to take them off? All right. So again, let's have the opposing counsel look at a revised Exhibit 14, and then I'll hear whether there's any objection. seeing any other issues from other counsel we'll note exhibits 14 through 18 have been admitted for the record without objection uh, I think at this point it'd be good to make sure we've got I think 1 through 18 with you the court reporter others but do you want me to get them to the witness let's uh, well um, if he's done looking at them let's just get them all compiled and organized and with the court reporter in case other defense counsel are going to reference them It wasn't for him to have them all. It's, we just need to have one through 18 oh, organized with the court reporter. Yeah. So you want me to take all the exhibits back from him? I think we ought to do that. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> yeah. That's mine. This is mine. Okay. I'll organize it. All right. As Ms. Merchant is doing that, let me go down the list. Mr. Sadak. Your Honor, if the court will permit, Mr. Gillen is going to ask some uh, questions that I was going to ask, and I'd like to be able to just follow up if there's anything that doesn't touch on that work. Well, let, me just, let me just, to keep it consistent, I'll go in order. So, um, if Mr. Sadow is deferring, then I'll go to Mr. Stocks. I'll defer to Mr. Durham on Zoom. No, no Your Honor. All right, Mr. McDougald. I will defer to Mr. Gill. All right, Mr. Rice. Mr. Gill. All right, thank you, Mr. Gill. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> uh, good afternoon, Mr. Wade. Good afternoon, sir. A few uh, follow-up questions. I'd like to start off with the exhibit number four that you should have up there. Those are the interrogatories. No, sir. They're, they're not up there. We remember I asked her to compile them all. So I'm now sorry. you can grab them. Yes, sir. 
Okay. Now, these are the interrogatories that you had filed on uh, May the 30th, 2023, in your divorce case, correct? Yes, sir. Now, you went over in part some of those interrogatories, but I, what I want you to do, because I, I, I want to get down to the specific language to clear up exactly what the interrogatories <coughs> asked for and exactly what you answered, okay? Yes, sir. Now, if we look on the interrogatory that uh, I believe, as we indicated, they're, they're really, I think, on page two, uh, the one that's, that starts off, describe each instance in which you've had sexual relations. You see that one? Yes, sir. All right. Now, that interrogatory uh, begins, describe each instance in which you have had sexual relations with a person other than your spouse during the course of the marriage, including the period of separation. You see that? Yes, sir. Now, these were filed on May the 30th, 2023, correct? Yes, sir. Now, at that time, uh, you had had sexual relations with Miss Willis, correct? Well, uh, Your Honor, I'm going to um, object to the question as phrased. I think the question is properly at that time um, certainly asked about his answer, but I, I, I object to. Mr. Gill, I'll just ask you to rephrase, but I think you can make the same point. Well, Your Honor, it's a specific interrogatory, and I would, you know, so the words do matter, and I would like him to answer uh, whether or not he'd had sexual relations with Ms. Willis, because uh, if he answered yes, then this interrogatory is a, uh, is a false interrogatory. So I would ask the court's indulgence. I'm not here to jump into some salacious um, bedroom situation. But this is an inter interrogatory that matters, so I would ask the court's indulgence. Ms. Cross? These questions have been asked and answered several times, and I understand Mr. Gillen is coming at it um, from a different way, but this question is not substantively different than those that have already been asked and answered in the information that he is seeking. All right. Um, Mr. Gillen, I'll, uh, I'll allow maybe this question and one more, but uh, I think you are asking it in a different way, and I'll ask you to stick to the point. All right. Now, as of May the 30th, and may, may, may I answer the question that I, uh, okay, thank you, Your Honor. Um, as of May the 30th, 2023, you had had sexual relations with Ms. Willis, isn't that correct? The, the interrogatory, sir, asks during the course of the marriage and through the period of separation. Excuse me. My Your Honor, I would ask that the court direct the witness to answer my question, yes or no. As of May the 30th, 2023, had you or had, had, had you had sexual relations with Ms. Willis? Yes, yes Mr. Gillen, let's start with... Uh, at the higher level, whether he, he believes he answered it truthfully, and then we can get, uh, drill down into why or why not he doesn't, and maybe we'll end up exactly where you left us. Well, it, but again, Your Honor, the point of it is is that the words matter, and that we have to establish what did and did not happen, and then he can give whatever uh, explanation he chooses to to what apparently is a false answer. But I would like an answer yeah. to my question. And you may get one. I just would ask. I would like us to start at the high level before we drill down to specifics to see whether he actually contradicted that interrogatory, if I'm making sense. Well, uh, the interrogatory is rel relatively direct and explicit. Sexual relationships with a person other than your spouse during the course of the marriage, including the period of separation. That's pretty simple. Sure. Uh, let's, let's see if, uh, if that's something you can get him to admit. You did have sexual relationships with someone other than your spouse during the course of the marriage uh, and during the period of separation which included up to May the 30th of 2023. Isn't that correct, sir? The, the, my answer to this interrogatory is none. Is no. So you're saying that you did not have sexual relationships with anyone uh, outside of your marriage, and the period of separation is during the period that you're answering the question to this interrogatory, correct, sir? I'm saying during the course of my marriage, I did not have sexual relations to anyone, and this answer is no. Well, Again, Your Honor, I, I need to, you can proceed, Mr. Gillen. I need to. We need a yes or no. <clears throat> Let's just get down to it. Did you or did you not, by May the thirtieth, <clears throat> twenty twenty-three, have had sexual relations with Miss Willis? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what you did is you answered no to that question, didn't you? Or none? Correct. I didn't answer no to the question you just asked. I answered no to the interrogatory question. And the interrogatory stands. Uh, that you answered as a pleading 
in a in a uh, in a in a civil proceeding your divorce case, right? Yes. <coughs> now, <coughs> excuse me. The next interrogatory. Let's move there. That interrogatory states as follows: Identify any and all occasions in which you entertain a member of the opposite sex, other than your spouse, who is not related to you by blood or marriage. Um, you see that? You, uh, now, uh, there are two parts to this. The second part is, I read on, or in which a member of the opposite sex, other than your spouse, not related to you, by blood or marriage, entertained you. And then it goes on to say, including but not limited to dining, drinking, <coughs> in restaurants, bars, pubs, hotels. You see that, correct? I do. Now, as of May the 30th, 2023, when you filed this interrogatory, you had, in fact, entertained Ms. Willis on many occasions, had you not? Again, during the course of the marriage. The marriage was irretrievably broken in 2015. Well, the, then answer's, the answer's still no. Let's read what the interrogatory says about the time period required to answer the interrogatory. Because what it says is, uh, it goes on to say, including you, including but not uh, limited to dining and or drinking at any restaurants, bars, pubs, hotels, or persons' homes from the date of marriage to the present. Do you understand what the word present means? I do. And present means the filing on May the 30th, 2023. Isn't that right? It is. So as of May the, tw the 30th, 2023, you have done a lot, or you had done a lot of entertaining of Miss Willis, had you not? I had done some, yes. And in fact, under your testimony, um, you would have said that she had also entertained you. Isn't that correct? Yes. And so your answer to this interrogatory is false, is it not, sir? No, it's not false. Uh, well, I hate to dance around the... You know, you, 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 the answer is yes, you did entertain Miss Willis, correct? Right? Yes. She's not, she's not uh, your spouse at that time or any time, correct? That's correct. She's not related to you by blood or marriage, correct? That's correct. But she entertained her, right? Yes. And during the course from your marriage, the period of time up to the press, so the answer would have been, yes, I did entertain somebody, correct? During the course of the marriage, no. Mr. Wade. Uh, Mr. Gill, I think we've, we've made your point. I think it speaks for itself, and we can save that for our argument. May, may, I'll just follow up with one quick question. Do you understand what the word present means? Your Honor, that's been asked of us. Yeah, I think we did cover that already as well. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what has happened... Uh, from the time that you file this court document in May of 2023, let's go over some of the things that you uh, had been involved in in terms of being entertained or entertaining. Prior to your filing on the answer on the, the interrogatories on May the 30th, 2023, we have already established, have we not, that you had paid for a uh, Royal Caribbean cruise to the Bahamas uh, with Miss Willis, correct? Yes, sir, with Miss Willis and my mother. Well, okay. your mother's not a part of this interrogatory. I'm talking about Miss Willis, okay? So you paid uh, and, and, and caused to be paid approximately $3,335 on that trip, Bahamas trip, from uh, October the 28th through October the 31st, correct? Yeah, no, no objection. I think we've said this ground several times already. Mr. Gillen, let's, let's cover new ground. Well, I am. I'm just trying to establish with specificity the things that he had done to entertain or be entertained prior to May the 30th, 2023. I'll try to move through it. Quickly. Sure. Well, uh, that's already part of the record in, in terms of his prior testimony. And so if you want to link those things, to, those two things together, you can do that during argument. Well, uh, so let me then let me discuss this. You indicated that during the course of your explanation concerning the Belize trip, that Miss Willis uh, that Miss Willis paid you all that money back in cash. Remember? Yes, sir. Now, the Belize trip had just happened, hadn't it? That occurred in March of eighteenth, twenty 
2023, right? <laughs> yes, sir. So you're filing this maybe two months after you have gone to Belize with Ms. Willis, correct? Uh, again, I believe all of this is our... I think you might be getting somewhere new. We'll see. All right. Yes, sir. So we've got the trip in, we've got the trip in uh, to Belize on, on March the 18th, 2023. You and Ms. Willis, correct? Yes, sir. Now, two months later, you follow the interrogatories that speak for themselves that we've gone over a few, a few minutes ago, correct? Yes, sir. Now, the March the 18th, 2023... To state the obvious is before March, excuse me, May the 30th, 2023. Will you agree with me on that? I do. Okay. So then you tell us that Miss <coughs> Willis uh, paid you in cash all of the money for the entire trip. That was a gift for you for your birthday, correct? Yes, sir. And I'm sure you probably have the deposit slips where you took the cash and deposited the cash into your account, don't you? I did not deposit the cash in my account. You don't have a single solitary deposit slip to corroborate or support any of your allegations that you were paid by Mrs. Willis in cash, do you? No, sir. Not a single solitary one? Not a one. Now, uh, when Miss Willis would pay you in cash, would you scamper down to the ATM with her and as she drew money out of her account Your to Honor. pay you these thousands of dollars? Mr. Gillen might scamper, but there's been no evidence that uh, Mr. Wade does. I object to the phrasing, the argumentative nature of the question. All right. uh, on that issue, overruled. Did you and Ms. Wade scamper down to the ATM machine and have her draw out, uh, for example, on the Belize trip, just on, on uh, your payment would have been uh, two thousand seven hundred ninety-four dollars. Miss Wade. For Claire, yeah, thank you. Pardon me. Miss Wade and I didn't didn't go to Belize. No, excuse me, uh, Miss Willis. I'm I'm sorry. Did you go down to the ATM with Miss Willis while she drew out two thousand seven hundred ninety-four dollars to pay you in cash? That you did. You know, did she? Did you go to the ATM with her? <laughs> no, sir. She didn't go to the ATM, oh. she carried the cash. Oh, and so she would give you the cash, and do you have a little place in your house where you just stack up all this cash that you apparently got to repay you for these benefits that you bestowed on her? Well, Mr. Gillen, if I answered that, I'm putting myself in jeopardy. If I, if I tell the world that I have cash someplace in my home, don't you think that, that could be problematic? No, I don't. I want an answer as to whether or not you have a little cash or in your house where you have allegedly taken the money that you got from Mrs. Willis and went and put it somewhere. Where'd you no, put sir. it? No, sir. Now, just put it on the hip and kind of walk around money? Did I put it on my hip and... and yeah, just and, walking around money where you would spend the cash yourself? Let me finish. Did I put it on my hip in Belize and walk around with no, it? No, when you got paid back, would you take the money, the cash that she gave you, and would you just carry it around with you for spending money around town? <laughs> So we have to break down each trip because, for example, for the cruise, she paid me the money before we took the cruise. So I was here and I could put the money in my pocket or put it away wherever I wanted to do with it. Um, other trips, she would give me the money there. So at that point, I could either spend it or put it in my pocket or put it in the hotel center. There, there's no special place that you would have all this cash that you would be getting from her that you've told us about that, to pay back for the benefits that you have bestowed on her? The only special place that that cash would have gone would have been to one of my children. Okay. Now, are you aware, um, have you discussed these pleadings with Ms. Willis? No, sir. So there's been no discussion between you and Ms. Willis about uh, the allegation concerning the benefits that you have bestowed on her. I'm Is that correct? I'm going to the phrasing of the benefits that bestowed upon her. I don't believe that's an accurate reflection of the testimony, and I don't think that's an appropriate question. I think overall, you can answer the question. Okay. When you say proceedings, are you talking about the divorce proceedings? Because we were talking about the interrogatories. And to that well, question, the answer is no. If you're at, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead with your answer. I want, I'll hear the complete answer, then I'll follow up. Okay. If you're asking me about... <clears throat> this hearing, the proceedings of this hearing, have we discussed the, the financial piece based upon Mr. Roman's motion? Yes. 
So you have discussed the financial piece. When did that? Where did that discussion take place? Comfortable. Were you other people there, or were you and Miss Willis discussing this about what your position was going to be? Mr. Gill, and the relevance has to do with with uh, suddenly we have a declaration from from Mr. Wade in this case where he says roughly equal and then shows one uh, alleged payment by Miss Willis. No mention of cash, none. So I need to find out a little bit more about how suddenly we have this this, this revelation about cash uh, from the witness stand today. Overall. So, so with our company there, when you say no mention of cash, um, if I provided one receipt that didn't amount to what you would think was roughly equal, the rest of it is cash. Well, did you in your declaration, sir, that was filed in this case, did you tell the court in that declaration that the expenditure that you had provided on behalf of Ms. Willis was paid for uh, back by her in cash, yes or no? I believe that I did when I said that the expenses were split roughly evenly. If you could point to me any place in your affidavit where you use the word cash, I would appreciate it. Take I didn't, your time. I didn't use the word cash, no sir. No, you didn't use the word cash, did you? But I didn't say that she didn't give it to me in cash. Uh, no, you just didn't tell anybody that you allegedly got paid back in cash, right? No, I, I, I told everyone who asked. Today? Yes, sir. Now, uh, who else was, uh, was with you, if anyone else, when you and Ms. Willis were discussing how you would be handling the financial component of the motion here today, that is the I'm personal gonna, benefits? I'm going to object to the relevance of that, Your Honor. Ms. Gill. Well, the relevance is if they know that they're going to be called as witnesses, they've been subpoenaed, and they are discussing what they're going to say, we need to know that. The court needs to know that. It goes to the veracity of Mr. Willis and, excuse me, uh, uh, Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade. We didn't discuss how we were going to handle testimony. My, my question was, when you were discussing with Ms. Willis in the conference room, when you were discussing what uh, you perceived to be the situation concerning the, the, the benefits for the payments, yes, sir. was there anyone else present? No, sir. How long did the meeting take? Probably five or ten minutes. Did Ms. Willis tell you what she was going to say? No, sir. Did you ask her whether she had any with, uh, bank withdrawals that would corroborate the, uh, the assertion that, uh, that she would uh, pay you back in large sums of cash for these, these trips to the Caribbean, Belize, California, on and on and on? Your Honor, again, I object. The proffer when the last relevance objection was made was that Mr. Gillen needed to know who else was there. These could be potential witnesses that he could cross-examine. That question has been answered, so I can Okay. I think it's still exploring possible bias or motive to shape his testimony, so overall on that ground. Thank you. Uh, now, now, Mr. Willis, uh, excuse me, Mr. Wade, when uh, you were having this discussion, did you ask her, did you ask Ms. Willis, do you have anything to support uh, these cash withdrawals? No, sir. Did you ask her uh, where she got the cash? Here, this, this is the conversation. I produced my credit card statement that showed what Miss Merchant in her filing was representing. That was the conversation. Um, okay, so when she would pay you back in cash, were you aware of what her financial situation was? Do you know what? <laughs> no, sir. Your Honor, I object to the relevance. So. Well, Your Honor, it's relevant because uh, we've been uh, bombarded with a book find me the votes in which uh, what's at issue is the financial benefit if that plays a material interest in an actual conflict of interest so I think that's relevant thank you now uh, have you read the book find me the votes I have you have I have okay uh, now 
in that book, uh, Ms. Willis uh, is telling the authors uh, uh, about how financially uh, uh, destitute she was, or uh, kind of hitting down on, on, on the bottom as she was running for DA. Do you remember that part of the book? So let me qualify the response. I've, I've read the, the, the book in, in parts. I, haven't, I, I hadn't had the time to sit and read the book in its entirety. Did you read that part about how she's telling the authors about how uh, little money she had and how her, financially she was in bad shape prior to when she was running? Did you, did you read that part? No, sir. Did you ever have discussions with Ms. Willis about her uh, financial situation, which was uh, which was uh, in in apparently in rough shape prior to her being elected DA. <laughs> no, sir. Miss Willis made it clear that her financial business was just that it was her business. I, I I know nothing about her financial status. I know nothing about how she was faring sure. before or after the election or even now. I know nothing about her finances. You're telling us that she didn't share that with you, but chose to share it with the authors of a book that's been uh, published and printed yeah. and sold nationally. I think that's a fair question for Cross. I, I, I don't know that she shared it with the author. I don't know that the author was telling the truth. I don't know the author, so I don't know, sir. Okay. Now, did you give an interview to, uh, uh, to the uh, authors of that book? I've given no interview, sir. You, so you haven't talked to them at all? Or I haven't talked to any media. All right. No. Uh, now, as it relates to the, I'd like to, though. As it relates to, so again, from your from your bank records that you're aware of, there'll be no there'll be no cash deposits, right? I didn't say that. Are there I, I, cash deposits which line up with the money that you have allegedly received from Miss Willis to quote pay you back for her part of the trips? So, so here's the thing. In my bank records, you will see cash deposits. You will see check deposits. I can't say that you, you look through the bank records and you won't see cash deposits because I have two sources of, of income, sir. I, income comes from my private practice, my firm, and income comes from the, the contract here with, with Fulton County. Um, during the course of private practice, occasionally I will have occasion to deposit cash into my account. And in preparation for this hearing and your testimony, did you go through your bank records to find out if you could locate any cash deposits that would corroborate your, your testimony? No, sir. I, I, I didn't go through my bank records at all. Now, uh, so what you would do, the money that you received, of course, the, the money that you received from your work for Fulton County, that's public funds, correct? No, sir, it's private funds. It's my public funds pay you to do work for Fulton County, correct? Tell me what the definition of a public fund is. A public fund would be your funds, as in not fund, but funds money, public money, as in money from taxpayers, by the Fulton County or the state of Georgia pay you to do the work that you're doing here in this case, yes or no? One or the other, I'm certain. You know which one? The case. I don't know which one, no, sir. Uh, now, those you would take those public funds, and those public funds would then use deposit in your account, and they were then used to pay uh, for the on the credit cards for the trips that you would take with uh, Ms. Willis, correct? I object to the question so far as the characterization of public funds. The witness didn't testify to that, and I don't believe there's been any evidence to that. Once it's paid to Mr. Wade, it's private funds. Well, the point of it is, is that you got money. Right, Mr. Gillen's rephrasing. Yeah, I'll, I'll read it. Let's break it down. You got money from Fulton County for the work that you do here, right? Yes, sir. You would send in invoices, <laughs> and they would pay you money, correct? Yes, sir. Those money, that the word private money, that money was money from either the citizens of Fulton County or from the state of Georgia, correct? Public, that's what I mean by public funds. Agree? Well, so I, I guess I'm having trouble with the, 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 the notion that this, this, 
the citizens of Fort County have paid me any funds. I'm not certain the funding source. I can tell you that either the state of Georgia or Fulton County has written me a check. So that would be, those two entities are public entities, correct? Yes. So they would, that would be public funds, right? Right? Yeah. Yes. And that, those public funds are from the same source that you would then use to pay out uh, on your uh, on your uh, your expenses for the trips that you took Miss Willis on, correct? No, sir. As as I testified to moments ago, I I have income coming in from my law firm. I also have income coming in from the, the funds that we're here discussing now, from either the state of Georgia or Fulton County, and or both. I'm I'm not certain what it is. So what to percent? say, so to say, sorry, that, I didn't mean to cut I'm, you off. Go ahead. So to say that I'm paying a credit card statement with funds coming from Fulton County or the state of Georgia would would not be an accurate statement because the funds could have very well come from my private practice. What percentage of your income in 2022 came from money for your working on this case or from your partners working for the Fulton County office? In 2022, I would, I would say 50-50. You think 50-50 in 2022? Yes, sir. What about 2023? Probably 60-40. 60-40? Yes, sir. So uh, the money that would be in those accounts, at least 60% of those, in your view, would be public funds, that those monies were then used to pay for the expenses that you had incurred for the trips that you took Miss Willis on the cruises, the uh, the Napa Valleys, the uh, the uh, Bahamas, correct? Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and now, what you what you did is that when you when you signed on in the in uh, November first uh, of twenty twenty one, that's when you signed on to be. Uh, Council for the anti uh, anti corruption matters, right? Yes, sir. Now, as you know, in your engagement letter, it doesn't say that you're signing on and your scope of work is to work on the uh, the Trump special grand jury investigation. Does it? No, sir. It says that you're signing on to work on anti uh, anti corruption, the anti corruption unit matters. Correct? Yes, sir matters with a with a plural correct yes sir so in your contract there is no specific reference to any specific case isn't that right that's correct okay now uh, but you didn't sign on for the duration there was a period you have a contract and then it would uh, then expire and then you would have a new contract correct yes sir now of course the the extension that you received, the first one was in November of 2021, and then uh, you filed, or excuse me, there was a renewal in, in November the 15th of 2022. Is that is that right? Sounds right. Oh, okay. Now, that was right after you got re-upped re by Ms. Will uh, Willis, right after uh, you took uh, Ms. Willis, uh, to Aruba, uh, isn't that right? On that November the first, 2022 trip to Aruba, and through November the fourth, 2022, correct? What does re-up mean? Well, re-up means that you came back, your contract was up, and then on November the fifteenth, you and Miss Will signed a new contract for you, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now. When you were in uh, taking her to uh, the Aruba and on the on the cruises and the, excuse me the resort there, did you discuss your re-upping uh, of the uh, of signing an extension on your contract? No, sir. Uh, so but you but you make an excellent point. Um, I'm I'm glad you point that out. So the the the, the trip to Aruba, the the contract was not in existence then. You're saying, so you're saying that you were not under contract. 
in, in, in your contract, did you send any invoices in for work that you did after your contract, your first contract expired? No, sir. You did? No, sir. No. Uh, when that expired, that was it. So and then you're saying that after the Aruba trip, you get re-upped with a new contract, correct? I signed a new contract, yes, now, sir. Was there any modifications on that contract? Did you get um, ex an extension on the cap that you were limited on the first one? Were there any modifications at all, Mr. Wills? Excuse me. I've done that again. I, I apologize. I, I've been called Mr. worse. Wade, I'm sorry. Uh, I've, I've been called worse. Uh, um, now, <laughs> were there any modifications on that? Um, do, you, do you have the contracts in front of you where you could... Uh, I don't have it in front of me, but I think that... Uh, because I believe the, as the work gradually... Um, as the time of the work gradually increased, the, the hourly cap would, would increase. In other words, starting out, um, starting out the investigation, it was impossible to anticipate um, the level of uh, cooperation from during the course of the investigation from some of the witnesses. So if you assume that there would be great cooperation um, with the witnesses um, in terms of uh, interviewing and speaking and being vol voluntarily speaking with you, it doesn't take as much time. Um, so after getting into it, realizing that most of the witnesses um, were not willing to speak or willing to turn over evidence or information, um, quickly you figure out that this is going to take a little more time than originally anticipated. And because of that, you have to uh, compensate for, for those hours. And that's why there was a compensation on your extension? Yes, um, the, the caps. A cap. Now, did Mrs. Willis, oh, excuse me, uh, did Ms. Willis review your invoices with you when you would submit them? Never. Uh, did anyone ever question whether or not you worked 24 hours in one day and billed 24 hours in one day? I've never worked 24 hours in one day and billed 24 hours in one day. Okay. And I'm glad you asked me that question because I, I'd like the opportunity to talk about that. I think you should go ahead. So. If you look at that invoice where, where it says 24 hours in one day, it, it actually doesn't say one day. If you look at the top of the invoice, it says date completed. The date that's reflected on that invoice reflects the date that the work was completed. It doesn't say when it started. It just says this is the date that is completed. So if you go through the invoices, probably around the first five or six, you'll see that that's the billing format. I would bill only after that particular task has been completed. That's why you see a 24-hour period with the one day there. I kind of wish some of the experts who had opined on that had called me and asked me the question, but there was never a billing of 24 hours in one day. Now, probably around the sixth or seventh invoice, you see the format changed. I started using a range so that it got less confusing, right? I'm confused, so maybe you can correct it. Okay. Um, in in exhibit uh, 14 you've got it you've got down uh, a specific day mm -hmm. prepared cases for pretrial November the 5th 2021 24 hours at $250 an hour 6,000 no, this wasn't about this was about a range. It was about the work that you did on November the fifth, twenty twenty one. Mr. Gillen, look at the top of the you know, invoice. The where it says date complete. Yeah, what I want you to do, Mr. Wade, is focus on the on the date that you have down there and tell the court what you billed for on November the fifth, twenty twenty one. Are we going to? I thought it was already in. I thought. Fourteen, uh, 14 is in. Uh, again, Mr. Gillen, it says completed date, date completed. The dates that you see here are the dates that that work was completed. So on November the 5th, I completed the task of preparing the cases for pretrial. That's the date I completed it. Just, then read, it took me just read if you would. Then my question was, read out loud 
the entry for November the 5th, 2021, and how many hours you billed that day. Just just do that for me, if you would. Yeah, I, I can't do witness, that. Excuse me, I believe the witness is entitled to answer his question. That certainly wasn't the question that Mr. Gillen asked. All right, well, the question now is to read a certain entry. So. Uh, I, I just read into the record, Mr. Wade, on November the 5th, 2021, how many hours did you bill the citizens of Fulton County for on that day? Just read it out, please. I completed the task on November 5th, 2021. 24 hours was billed at $250. You were you talked about your relationship with uh, Miss Willis, and your testimony is that it began in 2022. Do you remember that testimony? No, sir. Our relationship began. Our, our in your romantic relationship began in 2022. Is yes, that sir. Your, that's yes, your sir. testimony. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, when you were re-upped on this contract, you had a romantic relationship already established with Miss Willis, yes or no? In 2022? Yeah, when yes. we on the, uh, November the 15th, 2022, you had a romantic relationship with Miss Willis. I signed the second contract, yes sir. Answer my question please. On, I'm uh, not going you, to use the words re-up. signed up, uh, on the we re up or whatever you want to call it, your contract on November the 15th, 2022, you had a, a romantic relationship already existing with Miss Willis. Yes or no? I signed the contract, the second contract, yes, sir, during the course no, no, of no, a romantic relationship. Yes or no? You had a romantic relationship with her at the time that you signed up the extension on November the 15th, 2022. Yes or no? The answer to that question is yes. Thank you. Now, uh, the this was before the special purpose grand jury uh, uh, re released any, uh, uh, any a report. Isn't that correct? Correct. Are you asking me if it's before the work was completed or before no, the the, do, the special purpose grand jury actually released publicly released the report? When they were released the report. report. Your relationship with Miss with Miss Willis already existed when the special purpose grand jury released its report. Correct. At the time the report was released, yes, sir. But and you understand that the report, had, the 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 work had been completed prior to the release of the report. You understand that. And uh, your relationship with Miss Willis, of course, was prior to the indictment in this case. Correct. Yes, sir. Your Honor, if I may just ask uh, my uh, folks over here whether there's anything I need to clean up on. That's all the questions, Your Honor, I have. Thank you. Your Honor, I do have questions. Well, Mr. Senator, I don't think we went through. No, I had asked you the permission that he was going to go first on this, and then I was going to follow up as to the firm was to allow him to go first. That's what I thought I had asked. All right, let me, all right, with, with the understanding next time, we're going to keep going in order and not skip around the order. That's, all right. That's why I brought it up, because I, I thought that's what Okay. I all right. Uh, Mr. Sado. I'm going to try to keep my questions very specific. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. And I'm going to also, of course, try not um, to go back into specific questions that have already been asked. Okay? Yes, sir. When did your relationship with Ms. Willis end? 2023. Can you give us an approximation of not by date, but by month? Uh, <clears throat> summer 2023. Um, forgive me. I'm a, I'm a man. We don't do the date thing. Um, summer 23, I would say 
June, maybe. Okay. Okay. Using the euphemism personal relationship, did you have any personal relationship at all with Miss Willis after the summer of 2023? I want to make sure that I'm answering your question. Are you, because uh, let me let me rephrase if I might. The way it has been characterized in, for example, the response of the state, and I believe in your affidavit, is there's a difference between a personal relationship and a professional relationship. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm not talking about a professional relationship. I'm talking about a personal relationship. Have you had a personal relationship at all? And you know what I mean by that, after the summer of 2023. Are you asking me if I had intercourse with the district attorney? I, I was trying not to, but I, I guess the, if you're going to characterize it as that, the answer would be? The answer would be no. Okay. So it's been purely professional since the summer of 2023. So, so that's where we're having issues. Um, okay, I, you'll have to explain, because I don't know what the issue would be. No. I, I will explain to Thank you. you. Um, it, you say personal. Um, we're very good friends, probably closer than ever because of these attacks. But if you're asking me about specific intercourse, the answer is no. How about if I change it from intercourse to romantic? No. Okay. During the direct examination, you made a statement, at least I believe I heard it correctly, that you, personal relationship, and now I'm talking about that characterized the sexual romantic relationship, was not a secret. Is that correct? Wait. If you're asking me if people knew that we were having sex, no, they didn't. I'm asking you whether the people knew that you were dating whether you were romantically involved. You said that it was not a secret. Oh, it, it wasn't a secret. It was just private. My, my, my mother knew, obviously. Okay. Did anyone my, in the district attorney's office that has worked on this case know that you were dating or had a romantic relationship with District Attorney Willis? I don't know what they knew. Well, did you tell anyone? No. Do you have any knowledge of whether Ms. Willis revealed it to anyone? I have no clue. Okay. Uh, so as far as you know, as far as you know from personal knowledge, no one in the DA's team knew, correct? That's correct. Okay. So if it was a legitimate relationship, is there any particular reason why it was kept secret or private? It wasn't kept secret. It was kept private. And the purpose for that was? It's what we chose to do. I'm asking you why, though, not just because you chose. Why, if you're dating someone, why keep it private? So, two reasons. The first one is, and I want to say this respectfully in the right way, um, there are some people who are in the public eye who just don't like it, don't wish to be there. Um, I have tried to have lunch or dinner with her publicly, and I can't count the number of people that would approach the table or would accost us as we're trying to walk into a restaurant and just have lunch or have a meal. Um, it is not secret, it is private. We don't want the world, the world uh, asking questions or, or interrupting that time. So we weren't trying to keep anything a secret, Mr. Seda. Um, if there's nothing secret or salacious about having a private life, nothing. I'm not suggesting that there was, I'm asking the questions. When you went on the various trips that have been outlined by both Mr. Gillen and by uh, Ms. Merchant, did anyone in the district attorney's office know that the two of you were traveling on personal trips together? To my knowledge, Mr. Seda, I know. Okay. And again, that was for privacy, according to your testimony. Privacy, yes, sir. Okay. Did you and Miss Willis go to the Hapeville condo prior to your relationship starting the beginning of 2022? Prior to having 
physical contact prior to having intercourse? Do we go to the hate field conduct? Again, you keep going to intercourse, I'm trying not to, but fine. The answer to that, my question would be yes. Did you and Ms. Willis go to the hate field condo prior to what I want to say November 1st of 2021? Yes. Okay, and the purpose for going to the hate field condo with Ms. Willis prior to 2021 would have been what? Or prior to November 1 of 2021. Could, have been, could have been any number of things because at, at that time. At, That's what I'm asking. So tell me. Yeah, could have been any number of things because at that time um, she had a friend living in that condo. Miss, Miss Yearty lived in that condo. Okay. <clears throat> it maybe was my question was poorly worded. Let me try again. Your answer is yes, prior to November 1st of 2021, you would have gone to the Hapeville condo and been there with Miss Willis, correct? Yes. And you would have been there, as you indicated, for many reasons, right? Yes. Can you give me just list a few of the reasons? Miss Yurdy resided there, went to visit her, um, maybe went to talk about uh, a, a document that I received. Um, you would go to the condo I to talk about a document that you received? Absolutely. Okay, go ahead. Absolutely. Any other reasons? None come to mind. None come to mind? No, sir. And uh, would you say that it was frequent? When I say frequent, do you think prior to November 1st of 2021, you were at the condo more than 10 times? No, sir. So it would be less than 10 times? Yes, sir. So if phone records were to reflect that you were making phone calls from the same location as the condo before November uh, 1st of 2021, and it was on multiple occasions, the phone records would be wrong? If phone records reflected that, yes, sir. They'd be wrong. They'd be wrong. Okay. Did you, where did you live during that time period? The same place I live now. Which is not in Hapeville, correct? It is not in Hapeville. It is north of Atlanta, the city of Atlanta, correct? It is. Okay. So, and the other, any other reasons why you would be in the Hapeville area on multiple occasions prior to November 1st of 2021? Let's see. The Porsche experience is there. I'm sorry? The Porsche experience is there. Okay, so that would have been one. Any other um, reason? Yes, sir. The, the airport is there. Airport in Hapeville. Uh, yes, sir. Delta Airlines is okay. Okay. headquartered there. Um, Let's see. <clears throat> Restaurants there. Okay. Um, if, you have, if that's your recollection, that's fine. I'm not asking you to try to remember everything, but if uh, that's okay. okay. Uh, did you discuss your affidavit filed in connection with the response with Ms. Willis? No, sir. Did you know of personal knowledge whether Ms. Willis um, reviewed your affidavit before it was included with the response? I have no clue. So as far as you know, personal knowledge, Ms. Willis did not know what you said in the affidavit? I didn't give it to her. That's what I said. You have no personal knowledge. No personal knowledge. And as far as you know, no one else has told you that she did or didn't. I hadn't asked anyone. The We've kind of worked this up a little bit, and the numbers could be off. But according to our numbers, um, $10,000, give or take, would have been reflected on your credit card statements in connection with things um, potential benefit to Ms. Willis, okay? I want you just to assume that. Of the 10, assuming that there was $10,000 that you had on your credit cards, is it your testimony that Ms. Willis paid you back $10,000 in cash? <laughs> not my argument. I, I, I object that the characterization of $10,000 for Ms. Willis's travel, I don't believe is an accurate reflection of what the numbers, at least the summary that I've been provided by the defense. I think that's joint travel. Um, so I, is that right, Mr. Sater? I'm sorry. No, it's, it's, it, it's not joint travel. But uh, it's all I'm trying to understand, I, I, I'll rephrase because I don't want to get bogged down on specific numbers. You would have received thousands of dollars in cash from Ms. Willis, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. 
and the thousands of dollars in cash from Ms. Willis, do you know, not, I'm not asking you whether she took it out of her pocketbook or she took it out of a suitcase. I'm saying, do you know the source of the cash? J just that, out of her pocketbook, yes. Sir. You don't know where she obtained the cash? I, I didn't ask her. And the whole time that you, she was paying you in cash, you never said, hey, why do you have this amount of cash? Why would, Mr. S Mr. Sadow, in my practice, people come into my law firm all the time with cash. I never question where they got it. Yeah, but we're talking not about people that come into your law firm. We're talking about the district attorney of Fulton County who, I'm assuming, receives a paycheck. She doesn't get paid in cash. So, just like you assumed, I assumed she got it from her paycheck. I don't know. Okay, but of course, it's already been, and I'm not going to go back into it, you've not seen any records indicating withdrawals of cash from Miss Willis at all. Why would I ask her? I didn't no, ask. No, sir. All I said is you haven't, right? No, sir. Okay. Now, can you explain why you filed for divorce one day after you were hired by Miss Willis? You filed on November 2nd of 2021. You're hired on November 1st of 2021. Why this, the day after? You mean one day before? So you filed for divorce one day after you were hired, right? Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll answer your question. Okay, please. So in 2015, um, when my wife had the affair, um, we had a conversation that we would divorce right then. Again, the better practice, um, at least for my children at the time was to stay in place until the youngest could graduate and matriculate into college. We did that. When she graduated, matriculated into college, at the time my wife had moved back and forth to Houston, to Texas. So she's in Texas. We take our child off to college. We come back to Georgia for a brief period of time Divorce gets filed, she gets served. There we go. Now the reason that date was selected. Yes, sir. That's that's what I asked. The, the the specific reason that that specific date was selected was because she was only in town. Thank you, Your Honor. This is attorney client privilege. Why he decided to file you, his and why do you have the right to object on his behalf for attorney client privilege? Because well, I don't make formal. Judgment. All right, there we go. <laughs> Uh, and I, I believe that she, he's already attempted to answer this question and there was no privilege raised. So he's given a partial answer and, and now he's about to finish that. So first of all, I don't think it's covered by attorney-client privilege and, and I'll deal with that if you want me to. But otherwise, he's already answered part of it. So he doesn't get to say, now I'm going to stop. So, Well, it was a long preface, but I don't think it ever actually got to what might have been at issue there, so if you can lay the foundation, we'll deal with the objection. Okay. Take a step back. Okay. You realize that an attorney-client privilege is the privilege of the client, correct? Yes, sir. And you, in connection with your representation, at least has been um, proffered to the court uh, by Mr. Bradley, that it's up to you to decide whether you want to what raise the privilege, right? Yes, sir. It's not up to Mr. Bradley. Yes, sir. So you have the power, in order to get to the truth of the matter, you have the power to waive Your the attorney-client privilege, Your do you Honor, not? I believe that's an inappropriate question. The privilege is there. The Whether he uses it or not, it doesn't matter why. Mr. Sato, I think if we're trying to get to the answer to your question, let's figure out whether it covers the question you were trying to okay. get to. And your, if I may finish, and your position is you have no intention of waiving your attorney-client privilege, correct? That's correct. All right, so now, um, can you answer the question why you waited until November 2nd, the day after you were hired by Ms. Willis to file for divorce? I, I can. Okay. So, uh, again, Joycelyn had relocated to Texas, and she had been in Texas for months. She was only here for a brief period of time to drive my daughter's car back with her. And when she came here to do that, I was able to then get her served. 
Okay, so your answer as to why you waited until the day after you were hired by Ms. Willis, on, which would be November 1st, 2021, to file the complaint for the divorce on November 2nd, 2021. Your testimony under oath is because your she was wife here. was here. Was here. But had not been here in October, had not been here in September, had not been here in, Oct in August of 2021. She, she had been in Texas taking care of her a ailing mother so and your testimony an aging father. So the first opportunity that I had after <clears throat> speaking with my lawyers to take care of that was the date it was filed and served because she happened to be here. It had nothing to do with, that was purely coincidental, that contract. Oh, I understand it's purely coincidence, your testimony. Yes, sir, and, and understand that this was by agreement between, between she and I, she being my wife and I, that we would divorce when the children uh, matriculated out and that uh, there would actually have been an agreement attached to the filing. Um, it became apparent that the agreement wasn't wasn't going to happen and things got a little contentious so that's when the, the privilege will kick in and and i was forced to do it when i did it okay. so if i understood correctly again you tell me if i'm wrong is it your testimony that your wife was not in atlanta georgia or the metro area throughout October of 2021? No. That's in, not your October, in October of 2021, she was back and forth between here and Texas. Okay. So she was, at least on some occasions, in the Atlanta area. But that was during the time when we were working through the consent agreement that, that fell through. Are, I, again, I think we're pretty far afield on, on relevance. The answer to the question about the timing of the divorce filing. I understood, Ms. Cross. Uh, let's say now where we're going from here. Right, we're, we're about to finish this area since I'm not going to be able to go any, any further about. If we want to call the X, we'll call the X for that purpose. Well, we'll have to discuss whether that's a collateral issue altogether. No, I'm just saying if. I didn't say we will, but we'll. Okay. All right, so. Um, you said that you were aware of the contracts that Mr. Bradley and Mr. Campbell had with the Fulton County District Attorney's Office, correct? Yes, sir. And how did you become aware of those? Just through conversation. They told conversation with who? Mr. Bradley and Mr. Campbell. So you were discussing matters with Mr. Bradley which were not related to attorney-client privilege, correct? Related to the contracts, yes. Okay, but you were having conversations that would not, even though, if I understood correctly, Mr. Bradley was your attorney at the time, correct? At what time? At the time that, that Mr. Bradley received his contract from Fulton County, which would have been the beginning of January or in January of 2021, right? Is that the date of his contract? Pretty close. I, I don't know what the date of his contract was, What's it, but if, if, it, if it was after the date of the filing of the divorce, then, then, then yeah. I'm not talking about... I'm not talking about after the date of the filing of the divorce. It's been represented to the court that you had an attorney-client relationship with Mr. Bradley from 2015 forward, yes, correct? Sir. Yes, sir, that is correct. When Mr. Bradley received his contract with Fulton County, that was in 2021, correct? I don't know. But we can prove that through other evidence. But at the time that Mr. Bradley was doing work for Fulton County, if I understand, you still had an attorney-client privilege, at least you're claiming one, with Mr. Bradley, correct? Yes. Okay. So when you talk to Mr. Bradley about matters with his contract in Fulton County, those were not covered by your attorney-client privilege, correct? They were not. Okay, and that meant that not all communications with Mr. Bradley were covered by attorney-client privilege, correct? Well, those certainly weren't. Well, but my question was, not all communications with Mr. Bradley were covered by, at least as you've been represented to the court, by the attorney-client privilege, correct? Those communications were not. So there were communications outside of the attorney-client privilege, correct? With Mr. Yes. Bradley. If you're asking me if I ever communicate with him 
outside of the attorney-client privilege, the answer is yes. I okay. communicated with him outside the attorney-client privilege. <laughs> Um, let's uh, finish this up. And did you call it um, Roman number four? Or just defense? defense. Okay. In defense exhibit number four, and Mr. Gillen went over with you your responses to certain interrogatories on May the 30th, 2023. Remember that? Yes, sir. Uh, not going back into those, the words and the interrogatories are already in evidence, so we're not going to do that. But the ones that we've got that were gone into, there were two of them. And your answer to both of those was none, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, on January 25th of 2024, yes, sir. you again were in a position that you answered those same interrogatories, the two that we're talking about. I get specific if we need to, but as long as we understand we're talking about the same two, yes, right? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And they are in defense exhibit number six, and they are interrogatories number four and number five. Okay. Go ahead. No, I want you to be able to see it. So it's a defense exhibit number six. I don't so you have six up there? I'm told, I'm told that you have six. Okay. Ah, here we are. Okay. <laughs> you would agree with me that in defense exhibit number six, and we're talking about interrogatories of January 25, 2024. Yes, sir. That as to interrogatory number four, that's the same interrogatory, same words that were in the interrogatory that Mr. Gillen went over, which was dated May 30th of 2023, correct? Yes, sir. In your original response in defense exhibit number six was none, correct? Yes, sir. Your updated response was the plaintiff declines to respond to this interrogatory and asserts his privilege pursuant to OCGA section 24-5-505, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, you know that 24-5-505 breaks down into two, two privileges, right? Which, which is why I was specific. I said I asserted the privacy privilege. Well, that, that's what I'm asking you. But in your updated response, there's no reference to privacy, correct? Yes, there is in the in the code section twenty four five dash five hundred five. Okay, but it also goes to privacy. Right. Just go with me, okay? That code section says, does it not? No party or witness shall be required to testify as to any matter which may incriminate or tend to incriminate such party or witness, or which shall tend to bring infamy, disgrace, or public contempt upon such party or witness. You'd agree with that, right? I'm not reading it. I'm sorry? I'm not reading it. I don't have it in front of me. If, if I may. Mr. Senator, we can, uh, I can take judicial notice. That is what the rule says if you want to ask him any follow-up questions. Okay, thank you. You are not claiming that your answer to number four, interrogatory number four, on January 25th, 2024, incriminates you, that is, as in Fifth Amendment privilege, right? That's correct. You're claiming the second part that it would it would um, bring infamy, disgrace, or public contempt. Correct. I'm going to object to that. I don't think that's the full thing. But and also the witness doesn't have it in front of him, so I don't know how he could respond to that. He said several times privacy is largely invoked as statutory. Overall, I'm claiming privacy. The privilege that you make reference to is to infamy, disgrace, or public contempt upon the witness, right? Or party. That's the section that you were relying on, correct? If that's what it says, yes, sir. Okay, well, I, I could show you, but I, I think the court has already indicated he can take judicial notice of the statute. So you assume that what I'm telling you is accurate, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Uh, how would an answer of none bring infamy, disgrace, or public contempt upon you? So, as I explained um, in direct of, of Mr. Roman's counsel, um, the minute she elected to intervene into my divorce proceeding, I then started to understand the bigger picture, which was that all the attorneys in the election interference case were colluding with Joycelyn's divorce lawyer. And because of that, I said, privacy. I don't want my divorce proceeding to bleed into this criminal proceeding. I just didn't want that. So you raised a privilege, if I understand, that indicated that your answer would bring infamy, disgrace, or public contempt upon you, right? Your Honor, I'm going to object to the relevance of this and ask the answer several times. Mr. Seda, where are we heading with this? Um, I, I think I can finish that up by saying you didn't say none again. You asserted a privilege, correct? That's correct. Okay. And you did the same thing, did you not, with number five? That's correct. That's exactly, that is, you didn't say none again, right? Correct. Okay. Is the answer to the interrogatory number four? If you have it in front of you, is the answer none? Is that the truth? The, 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 the answer is, to that interrogatory, is as I placed it at the time I responded, sir. I'm asking the you answer. now, is the answer to that interrogatory the answer is, none? The answer is still privilege. All right. So he's apparently electing to apply the same privilege, Mr. Sado, to that exact same question. And, and I have a case which indicates that we can get beyond that if the court deems that appropriate. And uh, to what end? Hmm? To what end? Where that the privilege actually does not apply, and he must he must answer the question. And where does that get us? Even that, if he answers the question, hasn't he already kind of said everything he has to say about the nature of the relationship, how long it lasted, when it ended? No, I think it would prove. I, I think if he is forced or compelled to answer the question. He will either answer it falsely by saying none, or he answer it truthfully by saying yes, and then telling us what it is. That's what I believe. That's why I'm asking. But the interrogatory you're referring to, though, the, the question contained there. Two, two interrogatories, yes, sir. It's the entertaining one. It's whether there were other relationships, right? With the specific language that's in the interrogatories. Sure. Haven't you already, haven't you already covered that in all the other questions that we've had so far? Yeah, but, we have, but again, the court could, if I could require or compel an answer from him as to whether his answer would still be none, then we would know whether or not he was telling the truth. Now, if the answer is no, then obviously there was a time in the past where he was not. It simply requires him to now answer under oath what he refused to answer and claimed, but I might suggest it's a bogus privilege and that you can pierce that privilege because it's a material fact in connection with this case. Again, it's a call that your honor makes. I have the case law that says you can do that, but it's your discretion. Ms. Cross? Your honor, Mr. Bates on the stand now for several hours and he's asked very, been asked and answered very um, personal questions that I believe cover the issues. This, Mr. Lissado is making an argument and this is probably an argument to make for the um, later to the court and not a question to the panel. So as I see it, the only relevance these interrogatories had to this case really whatsoever would be as either prior inconsistent or consistent statements. And to that, and I think the question has been put to him again and again and again, he's answered how he believes uh, he felt his answer should be and, and why he answered a certain way. And as it goes to credibility, I think at this point we're arguing uh, wait, and I don't. I, I don't really see the the value in pushing this this issue further. So, all right. Well, the, just for the sorry. record, the case that I was going to refer to is, is State versus Wakefield at three twenty four Georgia Appeal five eighty seven, and specifically, let's see, it would be five ninety, in which they talk about this specific privilege. This is a uh, twenty thirteen case. And then they footnote to number th footnote three. And footnote three says, there are times when the materiality of the evidence outweighs the testimonial privilege. And it goes and explains what that is. That's so, what I'm bringing up. And I see what you're saying, that we could uh, say that you need to answer the question regardless of the privilege you asserted. At this point, though, I think we've covered that ground and we're ready to move on. Okay. Based on that, I have nothing else. Thank you. Okay. Mr. McCulloch. 
Anything on behalf of Mr. Floyd? Moving through Does defense mean, counsel. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm looking behind you. I Mr. McCall. So, okay. On behalf of Mr. Floyd, he's elbowing you, sir. Okay. Um, Mr. Cromwell. Nothing, All right. Ms. Cross. Mr. Wade, have you still got exhibit number 14 in front of you? That's uh, the one with all of the invoices, I believe. I believe I have them all. All right. So you were asked, Mr. Wade, about um, a couple of the invoice items. And your testimony, I think, was that the percentage of income post special counsel appointment in November 2021, the percentage of your income roughly after that time was about 50-50, Fulton versus other income from your um, law practice, correct? Roughly, yes, ma'am. Okay. Sometimes more, sometimes less? Yes, ma'am. All right. How about your time? I'm interested in the percentage of your time from... Up from November 2021 to let's say the close of the special purpose grand jury when it was dissolved in January 2023. Can you estimate for us the percentage of your time that was spent on Fulton County work versus other work? Oh gosh. 99 one. 99% of the time here in this building working on this case. All right. It was, as I understood your testimony, it was an intense period in terms of hours while that special purpose grand jury was meeting, correct? Yes, ma'am. And uh, who was head or manager of the election integrity case during that time for the district attorney's office? I was. You were coordinating the efforts? Yes, ma'am. And those efforts included not just the proceedings that were happening in this building, correct? That's correct. Um, we don't need to go all through it, but is your representation that 99.9% .9 of the time, let's restrict it to 2022, 99% of your professional working time was devoted to this case? Yes, ma'am. And the remainder, whatever it was, was to some of your other cases that were ongoing? Yes, ma'am. All right. 2022, I want to focus on that a little bit because if we are looking at, I believe, the financial affidavits, do you have those in front of you as well? I do. The... Financial affidavit that was filed in your divorce case in January 2022. You estimated your monthly income at that time was $14,000 a month, right? In 22? January 22. Yes, ma'am. January 23, what'd that number come to? 9,000. What about 2024? I, I don't know. Is that there in front of you? Is that one, that's not one of the ones that's there in front of you? No, ma'am. All right. So as reflected in those financial affidavits, your income decreased as a result of your work in this case, correct? Significantly. The structure of your firm, we talked a lot about that, and I don't want to go through it anymore but, uh, than we need to, but 2022, the structure of your firm changed. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. In the early part of 2022, there were three of you. You and Mr. Campbell and Mr. Bradley, you split expenses, is that right? That's correct. And you you profit shared among yourselves, correct? Correct. Right. After Mr. Bradley left the firm, then there were just two of you, correct? That is the cause of the significant change, yes ma'am. So now you have two people bringing in income, correct? Correct. And one of those people, you, is spending almost all of your time devoted to um, this election integrity case, correct? Yes ma'am. And your income from this election integrity case uh, is less than what it was the year before. Yes, ma'am. We talked about the monthly caps, or we didn't talk about it. There was talk about the monthly cap that was included in your um, contracts, indicating there was a, a certain threshold that you could reach number of hours a month. And over that amount, you were not going to be compensated, correct? That's correct. All right. And you kind of smile when you said that. That's a little bittersweet there, isn't it? That's bitter, bitter. All right. Exhibit 14, is that still there in front of you? It is. I want you to take a look, please. That's a collection of exhibits that includes all of your invoices, as was represented. I want you to take a look at invoice number nine. Yes, ma'am. Is that there in front of you? I have it. 
Invoice number nine, Mr. Wade, indicates that you performed hours of work that you were not compensated for because your cap had been reached. Yes, ma'am. Why don't you take a, and what did you do in those circumstances? When the hours that you worked per month were more than the cap the, that was in your contract that you were permitted to be paid for? I, I was forced to, to lose that time. I didn't get paid for it. Okay. And that's what exhibit number nine shows? Yes, ma'am. All right. And in exhibit number nine, you've got a task, hours that were completed, and you just didn't bill for it. You noted the time and then a zero beside it because you didn't bill the county for that time. Yes, ma'am. All right. What about exhibit number, um, invoice number 13? Can you flip to that for me? I have it. Is that a similar situation? Yes, ma'am, it is. And what is it on exhibit, num I'm sorry, invoice number 13? This invoice makes me cry. <laughs> there are so many hours here um, that I worked that I couldn't, I couldn't get paid for. So. And you worked those hours anyway, Mr. Wade? Oh, absolutely. This is not the type of job that you could walk away from just because you're not getting paid for it. I think there's some professional rules of responsibility to an attorney who's engaged in a, a case. You, you have to see it through. So. It's not like I can just throw my hands up and say, well, I reached my, my monthly cap, I'm done, I, I, I can walk away. I can't do that. This, this is ongoing, it's constant, and I have to do the work. Can you look at invoice number 23 for me there in exhibit number 14? Yes, ma'am. Does that reflect a similar situation, the hours worked that you were not compensated for? Yes, ma'am. Invoice number 24? And 27, can you take a look at those and let us know if that reflects the same situation? Are you trying to depress me? No. Look at the money I'm, I'm looking <laughs> It's the same, yes. Okay. And there's no work around to that. You didn't attempt to work around that, that um, contractual cap on your hours. Oh, no, ma'am. All right. You were asked a lot of questions, Mr. Wade, about the affidavit that was submitted, correct? Do you recall those questions? I'm sorry, I'm stuck on this invoice. You know, if I were going to get a benefit, I'd like that benefit. That, that's the one I want. That didn't happen. That but, didn't happen. Okay. Right. And there was no renegotiating your contract um, to reflect that those hours should be paid, right? No, ma'am. Okay. All right. Do you have your affidavit there in front of you? I do. The affidavit, of course, was attached to and provided in support of the state's response to Mr. Romney's motion, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. And you prepared that affidavit? I did. You signed that affidavit? I did. All of the allegations and the representations in that affidavit are true. Is that right, Mr. Wade? Every one of them. Every one of them. You were asked a lot of questions about our line number 34. Can you turn to that for me, please? It's on page four of that affidavit. Yes, ma'am. Can you read it out loud for me, please? The district attorney and I are both financially independent professionals. Expenses for personal travel were roughly divided equally between us. At times, I have made and purchased travel for District Attorney Willis and myself from my personal funds. At other times, District Attorney Willis has made and purchased travel for she and I from her personal funds. Examples of District Attorney Willis is purchasing plane tickets for she and I with her personal funds for our personal travel are attached. Funds, Mr. Wade. As you understand the term funds, does that include cash? Yes. Does that include credit? Yes. Does that include um, reimbursements? Yes. You didn't represent in your affidavit, Mr. Wade, that you were including all of the receipts from funds or uh, travel expenses that were paid on your behalf by District Attorney Willis, correct? <laughs> That's correct. You had, I think your conversation with Ms. Merchant was, you produced the receipt that you had. Yes, ma'am. Are you aware of any other receipts? Well, let me ask you this way, may I put you on this part of the I'm going to mark this as state's exhibit number one. 
You testified, Mr. Wade, that District Attorney Willis purchased and funded the in entire trip to Bailey's. That was her treat to you for her birthday? Yes, ma'am. And you testified that she purchased the plane tickets for you, correct? Yes, ma'am. And while you may not have had the receipts on hand when you filled out the affidavit, they weren't in your possession, are you aware now that there are receipts and um, that it reflects that the district attorney... Now, this is going to go into evidence. You'd like to look at the I've got a copy. Do you remember, Mr. Wade, approximately how much... And that's, again, State Exhibit number one. May I approach the witness now? Do you remember how much the flight was uh, for you, your flight to... Bailey's. And if you don't, I'm not tendering it through you, I'm just um, asking you to take a look at that and see if that refreshes your recollection as to the amount that that plane ticket cost that was um, extended by District Attorney. You may keep it. Thank you. You keep it. You keep it. <laughs> Does that refresh your recollection, Mr. Wade? It does, thank you. Approximately how much was the amount of the ticket that District Attorney Willis purchased for your travel to Davies? $887.35. And I'm not tendering it, Your Honor, but I will uh, leave it with the court reporter for reference and inclusion in the record. All right, <clears throat> Mr. Wade. Your testimony here in court today and consistent with your affidavit was that the personal relationship, I think we've called it dating today as well, the personal or dating relationship between you and the district attorney began sometime in early 2022, March, I think was your testimony, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Right. And that March date isn't included in the affidavit. The affidavit is, is less specific, but that was your testimony today? Yes, ma'am. And that there was no personal or dating relationship prior to that time, right? No. All right. Mr. Wade. I'm sorry, I'm going to direct your attention to 2020. In 2020, were you dating the district attorney? No. 2020, that was during the COVID pandemic, correct? It was. Uh, was there a situation for you, Mr. Wade, that made you particularly uh, vulnerable during the COVID period? Yes, ma'am. And in, in 2020, um, and a portion of 21, I was battling cancer. Um, and that prevented me from pretty much leaving the leaving environments that aren't sterile. And I just, I had health on my mind. You were particularly cautious during that time? Yes, ma'am. Were you dating anyone in 2020? No, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Wade. That's all I have. Ms. Marchant, recross on those points only. Yes, thank you. All right, Mr. Wade. Um, the state asked you about how much money you're making now versus before, and you said you're making significantly less since you've started working for Fulton County, correct? Well, I, 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 I did say that, but okay. what we're talking about is because this, the now at this point the splitting of the financial obligations in the firm are now there are two people carrying the weight of three. So that would scale back on the amount of income, right? Amount of profit. Well, you're splitting the profits 50-50, though, instead of one-third, correct? The, the profits, yes. Okay. So, um, but you did testify that you're making, you're making significantly less now. We heard about it for a few minutes. Significantly less now that you work for Fulton County, right? Yes. Okay. Um, would you agree with me that $236,000 is more than $184,000? Absolutely. Would you agree with me that two hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars is more than two hundred and thirty-six thousand dollars? Absolutely. Um, all of these years, despite you saying that you were a three-way partner with Wade and Campbell and Bradley, and now a two-way partner with Campbell, all of your corporate tax returns are filed in the law firm of Nathan Wade, though, correct? 
My returns? Yes, ma'am. Yes. For your law firm. Well, for my law firm, because I also have personal returns. Right. And I'm not talking about your personal returns. I'm talking about your business returns. Yeah, but but the, the question contemplates that my, my bring home money is more or less. So I want to be clear that is reflected in my personal returns. I didn't ask you anything about bring home money, though. I'm not sure what you're talking about. What I'm talking about is your question was the portion of my testimony dealing with earning significantly less money. No, no. My question is during, and let me, I'll just break it down. During 2019, you filed your business returns. I'm not talking about your personal. Your business returns for the law firm of Nathan Wade only, correct? I filed personal and business. Yes, ma'am. And even though you said you were partners with Bradley and Campbell, later on, you filed your business returns, not with them, but as a solo practitioner, correct? Ah, I see what you're going. There's a different return for that Wade Bradley Campbell entity. And I'm not asking about that. What I'm asking about is during the years 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022, you filed a business return for the law firm of Nathan Wade. Yes, ma'am. And in 2019, you said that the law firm of Nathan Wade made $184,000, correct? No, I, I, I don't know. Uh, is that, does, that, does that sound familiar? Does that sound about like what you made in um, 2019 and reported on your taxes as a business law firm? If, if that's what's on the return, yes, ma'am, you're right. Okay, and I'm happy I, I can bring those up. I've got one copy. I'm not planning on admitting them because they're tax returns, but. Okay. All right, may I approach Judge? Okay. Thank you. So in 2019, gross profit for the law firm of Nathan Wade is $184,000, correct? Let's see. The second line, number two, gross profit. Yes, ma'am. 184824 yes, ma'am. Okay. And then in 2020, you also filed Nathan Wade, attorney at law, and your gross profit was $230,000, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And in 2021, you also filed as a solo Nathan Wade PC attorney at law, and your gross profit was $236,000, correct? Yes, ma'am. And then in 2022, you filed as a solo practitioner Nathan Wade, and your gross income was $262,000, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to admit this. I've got your social. Um, but nowhere in these documents do you document that you received cash payments from this will, correct? I don't know. I hadn't looked through them. I, I would be surprised if it, if there were something in there that said uh, do that. Do you want to look through? Listen to the answer. I'd be shocked if there was something in there that said that I received some cash from Miss Willis. Okay. But there is um, itemized expenditures for travel in here. You did itemize that. I, I didn't itemize anything. My your accountant, accountant itemized it. I, I, I hope so. But you're responsible for your taxes, even if your accountant files them, right? I agree. Um, and so you itemized your expenses for travel on all these documents, but you did not itemize, you didn't put anything in there about you being reimbursed for half of that travel. Well, those are, those are business returns. Yes, you I, used your business I card would, to pay for the travel, right? But, but I, I wouldn't put a, a personal expense on a, on a business return. But you so used a business card to pay for these I use a personal travel. I use a business card to pay for everything. And what I do is turn over the statement to the accountant and the accountant then says, okay, this expense, that's personal. We'll put that over here. This expense, that's business. We'll put that over here. And they reconcile it. So you wouldn't find a reimbursement from Miss Willis on a business return. Okay, so they're not anywhere there. Nor would you find, well, go ahead. No, I'm just asking. So there's no, there's nowhere for any of that cash to be reconciled there, right? On the business returns, no ma'am. Okay. okay. Um, we talked a lot about the, the financial affidavits. I know the state asked you a couple questions about them. You filed one in um, 2022. In that one, you stated that you only had $5,000 in cash, correct? I believe you. Yes, ma'am. That was sworn under oath. At the time of filing, yes, ma'am. Okay. And then in January of 2024, you filed another one that also swore that you only had $5,000 in cash, correct? At the time of the filing, yes, ma'am. Okay, so in 2022 and 2024, you only had $5,000 in cash. At that time, yes, ma'am. At that time, I'm oh, sorry, excuse me. 
Um, and then you also, all of those interrogatories, I'm not going to go through them in painstaking detail, but every single interrogatory you filed, there are four of them, all verified ones, every single one, you said you didn't have any cash stored in a safe, a safety bo deposit box, or any other location. Plaintiff rarely carries cash. If plaintiff does carry cash, it's a nominal amount, correct? That's correct. Okay. So we've got what? 2021, you said you don't have cash. 2023, you said you don't have cash. Again in 2023, you said you don't have cash. And then in 2024, you don't have cash, right? So, so you're assuming that I, I received the cash and I stored it. I received the cash and I saved it. Well, you didn't what's, put it in the wrong bank, with receiving, right? what's wrong with receiving the cash, Ms. Merchant, and spending it? Nothing's wrong with it, but so you didn't put it in would, the bank. That would contemplate why the response is what it is on the interrogatories. So you spent the cash. That's Because before, when, when it was asked, you said you didn't want to disclose where the cash was. No, 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 no. For privacy that, reasons. No, well, I said that if I were to store cash in my home, then why would I share that with the, the world, is what I said. I didn't say that I had some cash stored up in some place, because that's not the truth. And you've talked a lot about this, um, I split with a third, I split with half, um, from, let's see, from the check you received from Fulton County, July 15th, 2022. So back, all the way back for July 2022, not a single check that you've received from Fulton County has gone into a joint banking account. Every single check has gone into your own personal banking account, correct? All of them, with the exception of the checks that were going into the WBC firm, went into my business bank account, which is solely in my name. Right. Your I, business, your, your WBC account that you're talking about, that account was closed, though, in June of 2022. Correct. Okay. So, so everything would, after June of 2022 was put in a Nathan Wade bank account, not a corporate bank account. With I, I think the, the, the question right before that only needed a yes or no. So, so, so no, ma'am. The, the the checks were deposited into firm accounts, law firm accounts. Law firm of Nathan Wade PC. Yes, ma'am. As a solo practitioner. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so they were not deposited into accounts with Campbell or Bradley. No, ma'am. They okay. were not. Thank However, you. there were checks written to Campbell and Bradley that will reflect the third, the third, the third. And we've tried to get those bank records, but you've objected to those, correct? You've tried to get what bank records? We subpoenaed bank records, and you've objected to all of those, right? Your Honor, I'm going to object to the relevance. It's relevant if he's saying he has all these records, but yet we've tried to get them, and he's trying to keep them from us, but he doesn't bring all of the records. And you can make an inference if he's, there's a there's law that says you can make an inference if, if some documents are within the party's control and they won't provide them, that there's an inference that they're not positive. Ms. Cross. Your Honor, there was no obligation for Mr. Uh, Wade to produce evidence that Ms. Merchant couldn't find an admissible way to produce. Uh, I, I believe it's irrelevant. We've covered the ground, and I, I um, object to any further questioning. All right. I'll uh, sustain that, Ms. Merchant. Let's find some new ground here. Okay. Thank you. Um, are you willing to waive your privilege with Mr. Bradley so that he can testify? I am not willing to waive attorney kind privilege. Okay. Thank you. Only on the questions, the health questions that were asked on campus. And I can ask you from here because we're very short. I don't want to get into the type of cancer. I don't want to get into the medical condition itself. Did I understand you to say that you had cancer in the year of 2020? Yes, sir. And you explained that because of that, in 2020, you were or kept yourself in a sterile environment? That's right, yes, sir. Now, what about 2021? 2021, just focusing on my health, trying to get back to myself. You remember I asked you some questions about Hapeville? Yes, sir. And the condo? Yes, sir. And you indicated that prior to November 1st of 2021, you had spent time at the condo, the Hapeville condo? Yes, sir. With Miss Willis, right? Yes, sir. And with someone else? You said Ms. Yerty? Ms. Yerty, yes, sir. Okay, so you were not concerned that was not a sterile environment, was it? Are, are you inferring that Ms. Yerty and no, D.A. Willis that, is not sterile? Of no. course it's a sterile environment. It's, it's a, a condo. But don't you remember that I followed up and said, where else might you have been to show your cell phone records from Hateville? And you said the airport, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. 
not a sterile environment, though, the airport, you agree? It is not. Okay, what about restaurants? Not a sterile environment, right? They are not. And the Porsche, you said something about a Porsche what? The Porsche experience. That doesn't sound very sterile to me. Is that a sterile environment? Wait, you're inside your vehicle. Yeah, but don't you mingle with others? You can. Yeah, and you were doing all that in 2021 before November 1st. That's what you testified to, correct? Yes, sir. So there's no reason why you couldn't be dating in 2021, is there? Give me 2020, Mr. Sadow. No, say 2021. All right. Correct? Dating? No. No reason. No right. reason. Got it. Thanks. <coughs> All right, Mr. Gillen. Uh, okay. Mr. Stocks. Stockton. Stocks, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Just real briefly, you said you started dating in early 2022, and you also used the term personal relationship, uh, and there was no dating and no personal relationship prior to early 22. Is that correct? Help me understand. I want to make sure I answer you. So, so let let's let's be clear. Twenty twenty two was the start of any intimate sexual relationship with a district attorney. Okay, and that's what I was wanting to okay. make clear. In your affidavit, you used the term personal relationship. Got it. Today, you use the term dating, and. Your testimony today is that that includes the term basically physical or sexual or intimate relationship. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And there was nothing, according to your testimony, there was none of that prior to early 20th. That is correct. That's all I've got, Judge. All right, not seeing anyone else. Ms. Cross, any regrets? All right, Ms. Merchant, can this witness be excused? Um, Judge, we'd ask to keep him under subpoena. We might need him to come back after the All right. All right. You may sit down, Mr. Wade, and uh, please don't discuss your testimony with any other witnesses. She mentioned subpoena, Judge. Let me just say this. That was an, a, an inference made that I was somehow evading uh, service uh, of a we, subpoena. We can take that up. That, I don't think we need to have it on the record in this here. Understood, though. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you like it, comment and hit the like and share buttons. Subscribe for future videos.